Hi everybody, it's day 16 of Savor at Home um, and we're gonna be trying a scotch today. Uh, we're actually going down to Campbelltown to try Springbank 10 year old Campbelltown single malt scotch whiskey. So Campbelltown is one of the regions in Scotland um, that is the southwest uh, corner of Scotland. Um, Springbank is one of the distilleries there and this is their single malt scotch aged 10 years minimum. Um, so single malt, uh, as we know, is made of entirely 100% malted barley from one distillery and is aged for at least three years in order to be scotch. But since this says 10 years on it, everything that goes into making this or bottle right here is at least 10 years old. Um, so Springbank uh, does 100% of the entire process on site. So they start with the malting of the barley using traditional floor maltings. Um, they dry their malt using either peat or not peat or a combination, subtle peat, uh, depending on what they're making. Um, and when we start diving into the tasting notes of this 10 year old kind of uh, decide what I think that they're doing um, for Springbank. Um, and then they do 110 hour fermentation, followed by two and a half times uh, distillation. Now this half distillation is, is kind of interesting, so I'll dive into that for in a second. Um, and then it is aged, as we said, for at least 10 years. And for uh, this bottling, it's using a combination of bourbon and sherry casks. Um, so two and, a, two and a half times distilled, like what does that mean to do a half distillation? Um, and there's a couple of things when distilleries claim that they're doing not a full distillation if they say two and a half times or something like that. Um, they're either splitting the batch, they're splitting the wash into two different uh, batches, half batches, and they're distilling one half two times and the other half uh, three times. Oh, bye Lou. My co-host is gone. Um, that's one option. Um, it's not what Springbank does, um, but another one is the other option is that they're taking one of the cuts that they've made, either the heads or the tails cut or faints, depending on who you talk to, um, and tossing that back in for another distillation. And this is what Springbank, Springbank does. Um, they take the tails or the faints off of the first spirit still. So the stuff that's in the first spirit still or coming out of the first spirit still has gone through the still twice. Um, and they're taking the tails, the stuff that's left over or the stuff that comes off towards the end uh, of that distillation and then tossing that back in with some of the low wines. So something that's been through the still once and then redistilling that all together. Um, so there you have it. That's how they call it uh, a half distillation. So two and a half distillations. Um, so that means that uh, one part or the entire uh, hearts has gone through two times, but the tails uh, ends up going through the still three times. Um, why would you do that? Uh, this is to pull out more flavor from the fermentation um, or in the hopes of, of doing that, uh, which is really interesting. This is actually the first time I've, I've considered like, what does that, I've, I've, or that I've seen a half distillation being tossed in there. Um, so yeah, I thought that was cool. If you have any questions, uh, let me know if I didn't explain that uh, properly. But let's go ahead and dive in. So 10 year old, you can see that there's, you know, a pretty light golden color to that. Um, now Springbank does say that they don't add any coloring at all. Um, now for some scotches they do, they add a little bit of caramel coloring, um, but all the color that you're getting in here is coming from the wood. So there's a lot, a lot, a lot of citrusy notes for this. Um, I'm getting a lot of lemon and orange, but more of like the orange peel. Just a 
hint of peat. I'm not getting too much peat there. So, so for me, I'm thinking that um, they're, well, they're using peat for uh, drying the barley, um, but only a little bit of peat. It's not heavily peated at all. Or in my opinion, it's not. A little roastiness on the nose, maybe some like honey peanuts or something like that. Yeah, some honey roasted peanuts. But yeah, a lot, a lot, a lot of fruit on the nose. All right, let's go ahead and dive in. So the fruity notes that I'm getting are more of like the fruit peel, like the, or the citrus peel. So like a lemon peel and an orange peel. It's not quite as sweet. There's um, some earthiness to this as well. Um, it's pretty delicate, very light. Um, Yeah, again, I'm not getting too much peatiness. It's coming across a little bit earthier than than actual peat smoke. And a little bit of honey. Um, I'm not getting a whole lot of dried fruits, which I would think from having the sherry cask influence um, in there. But again, it doesn't say how much of the sherry cask influence there is. Um, but yeah. Overall, a, a nice, delicate uh, whiskey that I would suggest picking up for sipping on, um, especially if you're someone who likes subtle peat. Uh, yeah, this would be a good one to grab. But thanks, guys. <laughs>